Okay, thank you for coming to my presentation. I'm Shen Wang from University of Illinois, Urbana Champaign. I'm a second year PhD student. So today I'm going to introduce our work exploiting ontology graph for predicting sparsely annotated gene function. This is a joint work with Hong Chou, Professor Chen Xiangzhai, Professor Bonnie Berger, and Professor Jian Peng. In this talk, I will introduce a novel network-based algorithm for gene function annotation. Our algorithm is not only limited to gene function annotation, but can also be applied to many other problems with a large input network and also a large output network. So many functions only have very few annotations. For those sparsely annotated functions, we will not have enough training sample. So a simple classifier will be very easy to be overfit. In this work, we propose to use the gene ontology graph to capture the similarity between functions. So in this way, we can use the samples of similar function to help alleviate the overfitting in those sparsely annotated functions. As a result, we observe a substantial improvement on the sparsely annotated function. For example, on the human biological process data set, we we, uh, the micro AUROC improved from 0.73 to 0.85 by using our method. There are many previous works that used the, used the information from neighbors in the molecular networks to do prediction. For example, if many of the neighbors of these genes have been annotated to this function, then this gene is also very likely to be annotated by this function. And this approach is called good by association. Beyond the direct neighbor, we can also see the property of indirect neighbor. We can use algorithms such as random work with restart or lip propagation. One problem with the molecular network is its nature of high dimensionality. There are more than 16,000 proteins in the human protein-protein interaction network. So if we model each node as one dimension, we will have a dimension, we will have a 16,000 dimension network space. So because of this complicated network structure, there may be many thick and missing edges in the network. So we need to find an effective way to model this large and noisy input <coughs> network data. There is a recent work called uh, Diffusion of Component Analysis, which is published in Recom B 2015. It effectively models this noise and noisy and large net molecular networks. So DCA will first learn a low-dimensional representation for each gene in the network, and then do prediction in this low-dimensional space by taking the low-dimensional feature as the low-dimensional representation as features and using classifiers such as support victim machine or k nearest enable. DCA achieves a very good performance on the MIPS data set in comparison to other dimensionality reduction methods such as principal component analysis or non-negative metric realization. However, MIPS data set is very small and uh, different from the MIPS data set, gene ontology function is very sparse. Nearly half of the function only have very few annotations. Here I show the statistics of, uh, of the human data set and the EAST data set. We can see that about 15% of human geo label have only been annotated by less than 10 genes. <coughs> and about 18% of the EAST geo label have been annotated by less than 13 genes. So as a result, for those sparsely annotated function, we will not have enough training samples and a simple classifier will very easily to be overfit. To solve this problem, in this work, we propose to use the gene ontology graph to alleviate the sparse annotation challenge. Gene ontology graph is a directed acyclic graph. Here, each node is a function, which is also called a geoterm, and each edge is a relationship between two functions. The relationship could be part of relationship, is a relationship, and other relationship. For example, here, cellular process is a biological process. So intuitively, if two functions are very close in the gene ontology graph, then they may be annotated by similar genes. So we can, so we can, use, we can use the gene ontology graph to learn the function similarity, and then use the training sample of similar function for those sparsely annotated function to help alleviate the overfitting problem. Besides this special DAG structure, gene ontology graph is also very large. For example, in the human biological process data, there are more than 7,000 geoterms. 
So if we assign one dimension to each geo term to represent the Qing ontology graph, we will have an output space with more than 7,000 dimensions. So besides the a very large input network, we will also have a very large high dimensional output space. In this work, our contribution is to view the entire gene ontology graph as a high dimensional output space and do prediction on this challenge data set. Uh, before I introduce our method, let's first take a look about the problem definition. Like I have mentioned at the beginning, our method is not only limited to the gene function annotation, but can also be used to many other problems with a high dimensional input network and also a high dimensional output network. And we only observe very sparse annotation between this input and output network. And we want to do prediction for the other unobserved annotations. So here in the problem of gene function annotation, the input network will be the molecular networks and the output network will be the gene ontology graph. And we want to predict the annotation between genes and functions. The key idea of our method is to do dimensionality reduction on both input space and output space. So by doing dimensionality reduction on the molecular networks, we can capture the function topology for genes. Genes that are close to each other in the molecular network will have a very similar low dimensional vector representation. So in this way, we can reduce the noise in the high dimensional network data. Besides the input space, we also propose to do dimensionality reduction on output gene ontology space. Functions that are similar to each other in the original gene ontology graph will also, learn, will also get a similar low dimensional vector representation. So in this, in this way, we can use the training sample of similar function to help predict those sparsely annotated function. In this way, we can alleviate the overfitting problem for those sparsely annotated functions. So before I go into detail of our algorithm, let's first take a, the, take a look at the flow chart of our method. Given the molecular network and the gene ontology graph in a very high dimensional space, we first use DC as the dimensionality reduction method to reduce the molecular networks into low dimensional vector representation. So now we will have a low dimensional vector representation for each gene in a low dimensional space. We also apply DC on the gene ontology to reduce the high dimensional gene ontology to, a, to low dimensional vector, vector representation of functions. So now function is in another low dimensional space. Then we do the prediction in this low dimensional space by first project the gene vector into the function vector. We learn a projection matrix W from the observed annotation. So if a gene have ever, has ever been annotated by a function, this gene vector should be very close to the function vector in the, fun in the low dimensional space. After putting all the gene and the function in the same low dimensional space, we can predict for the unobserved annotation by measuring the similarity between the gene vector and the function vector. If the gene vector is very close to the function vector, then this gene is very likely to be annotated by that function. Now I will introduce the detail how we learn the low dimensional vector, how we reduce the high dimensional network into low dimensional ve vector for each, each node in the network. We first use a random work with restart algorithm on the input network. Random work with restart, with restart is very similar to the page rank. So it will start from node, a node I in the network and then randomly go to one of its neighbors in the network. And in each time step, each time step, we will also have a certain probability to go back to the starting node i. And after it converge, we will have a probability distribution that characterize the distance between the starting node and each node in the network. So if the node is very close to the starting node, it will have a very high probability. And we call this probability distribution the diffusion state. After running random work with restart from each node, uh, each node in the network, we will have a diffusion state for each node. We then train a multinomial logistic model to learn the low dimensional vector for each node. We try to minimize the clear divergence between the observed states and the model estimate states. So in this way, we can learn a low dimensional vector for each node in the network.
Besides the input network, we also propose to do dimensionality reduction on the output gene ontology, on gene ontology graph. However, because the gene ontology graph is, has a DAG structure, so random walk with restart cannot reach all the nodes in this graph. To solve this problem, we add some backpropagation edges on the, net, on the gene ontology graph. Backpropagation edge not only help us capture the child and parent relationship in the DAG structure, but can also help us capture the sibling relationship. So each node can first go to its parents and then go to its sibling by using a backpropagation edge. In this way, we can capture the function similarity in the gene ontology graph. And the functions that are close to each other in the gene ontology graph will have a very similar low dimensional vector representation. We then apply the, si the same multinomial logistic model to learn the low dimensional representation for each function in the network. And now we will have the low dimensional representation for all the genes and functions. Then we try to do prediction in the low dimensional space. We first projected the gene vector into the function vector by a project projection matrix. Here, xi is the, is the vector for low dimensional vector for the gene i, and the yi is the projected gene vector in the function space. Uh, we define the affinity score of gene i to function j as the dot product between the two vectors. So if gene i is annotated to function j, Gene I will have a very close, I will have a very similar vector as function J. So their, their dot product will be very large. We learn the projection matrix by optimizing this formula. We try to maximize the margin between the positive samples and negative samples. And this, this optimization formula can be solved analytically by a closed form solution. So to sum up, we do dimensionality reduction on both input network and the output network. We then project the, the latent vector of genes and the function into the same vector space, and then do prediction in the low dimensional space. If a gene had been annotated by a function, the gene vector will be very close to the function vectors. In this way, we can use the, in this way, gene can also be used, this gene can also be used as the training sample for other similar functions. So, so for those functions that has, has only have very few annotations, we can use the we can use the training sample of, of its similar function. In this way, we can alleviate the overfitting. We did experiments on three data sets: the human data set, the yeast data set, and the mouse geofunction data set. Uh, we get six molecular networks from string 9.1 database, including the physical network the co-expression network, the structure network, and others. We remove the text money networks. We compare our method with three state-of-art methods. The first method is gene mania, which has a widely used web server, and it uses a lib propagation on the molecular networks to do prediction. The second method is we use DCA feature with a key nearest neighbor method. <coughs> Since, since neither of gene mania and DC have used the gene ontology graph, we also compare our method with a third approach, which used the gene ontology graph. It is a hierarchical classification method, uh, which, which trains a structure SVM on our DCA feature. All these methods and our approach are using the exactly same data set with same input and same output data set. Here, I will show the experiment result on the human biological process data set. I will show the result of micro AURC, which gave equal weight to, to every training samples. We category function into different sparsity levels so that we can see the improvements of our methods on different sparsity level. For example, here in the x-axis, 3 to 10 means functions that have, that have only been annotated by less than 10 genes and more than 3 genes. So let's first take a look about the uh, most sparse functions that only have been annotated by less than 10 genes. Here, the blue one is our method. And we can see that our method substantially improved on the sparsely annotated function. DCA and the hierarchical classification do not perform very well because the output space is too large here. And gene mania have a pretty good performance. 
However, because our method explicitly used the gene ontology graph and gene mania do not explicitly use the lab informa label information, so our, our method outperformed gene mania on these very sparse annotated functions. Fourth, for functions that have only been annotated by less than 13 genes, we also observe the same improvement. Our method also substantial improvement on gene mania. For other densely, for other densely annotated function, our method has less improvement, but still statistically significant better than the other comparison method. We can see the idea of less is more here. By doing dimensionality reduction, although we may lose some, info, lose some information in the network, we are actually getting a much better prediction performance. We also observed the same experiment result on the human molecular function category A and also on the EAST dataset, which has both molecular function category and the biological process, process category. And we also observed the same experiment result on the mouse function dataset. Here, gene mania has the state-of-art experiment result on this data set, and our method still substantially improved on the sparsely annotated function and get similar results on the densely annotated function. In the future, we plan to annotate the function subject to the DAG structure so that we can remove some false positives in the prediction result. And we also plan to incorporate sequence features such as functional domains and uh, homology features such as from cross species. We also plan to build a web server for gene function annotation. Okay, I would like to thank to my great co-authors, Hong Chou, Professor Chen Xiangzhai, Professor Boni Berger, and Professor Jian Pen. The travel funding was generally provided by ICMB 2015. I also want to thank for Dr. Hui Feng Pu and Dr. Noel Daniels to help me pre pre practice my talk. Okay, in conclusion, we propose a dimensionality reduction method on both molecular network and gene ontology graph, and we get substantial improvement on the sparsely annotated gene function on all three data sets. We also put our code on this available online. Okay, this is all of my presentation. Thank you. Very good presentation, extremely well trained. Questions in the audience? No questions? Yes. Do you mean the time, the speed of our method and our, so the speed of our, our method is faster than gene mania because we train all the, all the labels at the same time. But gene mania have trained each label independently. So our method is faster than gene mania. Okay. Other questions Why people are moving in and out? Well, I have one. You mentioned about the back propagation probabilities. Yes. So how much does that influence your prediction? And have you looked at increasing that backward probability and seeing how the performance changed? So the back propagation parameter is quite stable from like 0 0.5 to 0 0.9. Mm -hmm. So it do not impact a lot on our performance. But adding a back propagation age will, will make us can do random work with restart on the graph. And have you tried to actually jump from one branch to the other through the sibling with a, not a real prob prob backward propagation, but rather trying to see the influence of going in from one branch to the other? thinking about the fact that proteins, even if they are annotated in Go into one of the leaf, yeah. they might actually also found in other part of the, of the annotation tree. So did you look at that? Or? No, we didn't, but I think this is uh, very interesting. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. No more questions? Okay, thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Talk.